Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to the channel that is AMS MBBS lectures. In today's session, we're going to discuss another topic from CVS microbiology and that is enteric fever guys. Take care. This is an important topic and as always, we're going to discuss this topic under the following headings. Okay, that is your... Uh, classification and nomenclature then we're going to discuss antigenic structures then your pathogenesis clinical manifestations then we have your epidemiology and uh, we're also going to discuss the laboratory diagnosis and very important vidal test treatment drug resistance and some prophylactic measures under with that we're going to also cover up the vaccination for your enteric fever guys take care so right now in this video we're going to discuss the first two topics that is classification and nomenclature with the antigenic structure details and the rest of topics will be covered in the subsequent videos okay so let's get started with classification and nomenclature guys okay under this topic we're going to discuss okay a bit of introduction and some factual points initially and then we're going to look at the three important classification schemes the clinical classification antigenic classification and the molecular classification and lastly a small note on what is nomenclature and then we will jump to the next topic that is antigenic structure okay so when i say uh, salmonella okay when i say enteric fever guys enteric fever is something that is going to be caused by two important organisms ke wajah se hum log ka enteric fever ho sakta hai either it is called the salmonella typhi or we can say it can result due to salmonella para typhi and enteric fever okay includes two important uh, entities salmonella typhi se ho raha hai so it is called as the typhoid fever okay it is called the typhoid fever and if the causative organism is s para typhi it is resulting into a condition called as para typhoid fever okay some important factual points to just remember that is enteric fever can be caused by s typhi or s para typhi the ultimatum is caused by salmonella right and if it is caused by salmonella typhi it is called typhoid fever if it is caused by salmonella para typhi it is okay resulting into para typhoid fever clear now this organism that is salmonella guys okay this is nothing but a gram it is a gram negative bacillus okay then salmonella belongs to the family what is the family what's the name of the family which salmonella belongs to it is enterobacteriaceae okay it is enterobacteriaceae entero एंट्रोबैक्टेरिया फैमिली को बिलोंग करता है हम लोग का सैलमोनेला एंड हु डिस्कवर्ड सैलमोनेला सैलमोनेला वॉज डिस्कवर्ड बाय अ साइंटिस्ट रेफर टू एज सैलमोन एंड स्मिथ Salmon and Smith ने इसे डिस्कवर किया था गाइज इन द ईयर एटीन एटी फोर ठीक है इन द ईयर एटीन एटी फाइव माई बैट इट इज एटीन एटी फाइव डिस्कवर्ड बाई सैलमन एंड स्मिथ एंड द इम्पॉर्टेंट स्पीशी टू रिमेंबर दैट इज कॉल्ड एज योर सैलमोनेला टाइफी गाइज दिस सैलमोनेला टाइफी ऑन द अदर हैंड इज डिस्कवर्ड वॉज फर्स्ट ऑब्जर्व बाय ईबर्थ इन द ईयर एटीन एटी and another person that is called as named as gafki in the year 1884 okay and therefore salmonella typhi formerly was called as okay formerly it was also known as eberth gafki bacillus okay eberth gafki bacillus or we can say it was also referred to as the eberthella typhi okay so these are some important uh, factual points to remember okay mcq can be expected from this part they may ask something or the other from this part as well now let's go to the main part that is classification schemes as i already said there are three starting with the first one that is called as a clinical classification guys now according to this classification guys this is like one of the most widely used classification the oldest classification of salmonella that is clinical classification it divides salmonella into two groups that is your typhoidal salmonella and the non typhoidal salmonella non typhoidal salmonella is also referred to as nts okay it is abbreviated as nts non typhoidal salmonella 
okay now when i say typhoidal salmonella guys it is going to involve certain serotypes okay it involves serotypes like your two major one that is your s typhi and it was also going to involve your s paratyphi salmonella paratyphi and salmonella typhi they both are typhoidal category of salmonella so that's typhoidal salmonella okay next point to remember is with respect to the host okay अब होस्ट की बात करेंगे तो दीज आर ओनली रेस्ट्रिक्टेड टू ह्यूमन होस्ट ओके यस टाइफॉइडल सालमोनेला ओनली रेस्ट्रिक्टेड टू ह्यूमन होस्ट गाइस एंड इट विल रिजल्ट इन टू कंडीशन कॉल्ड एज एंटेरिक फीवर इट इज गोइंग टू कॉज इट इज गोइंग टू कॉज एंटेरिक फीवर ओके and same points we found to differentiate okay the non typhoidal salmonella if i write it is going to involve all the remaining serotypes okay it will involve all the remaining serotypes ko involve karega ye and uh, is it restricted to only host okay only humans ko restricted hoga no it is going to involve a wide range of host okay there is a wide range of a host and they are going to colonize your intestine guys okay yes they are going to colonize the intestine and when i say wide range of host it is going to involve all your mammals reptiles birds and also your insects theek okay? hai a wide uh, range of organisms are involved over here they colonize mainly the intestine and thereby when it infects the humans guys okay in humans if it is infecting it will cause your all gastrointestinal problems okay like your food bone gastroenteritis okay food bone gastroenteritis and second it may also result into septicemia okay it may result into septicemia are we clear between the difference between the typhoidal salmonella and the non typhoidal salmonella clear next thing the second classification scheme is called as your antigenic classification or the kaufman white scheme according to this classification we have zero groups and we have zero types okay now the genus salmonella guys okay salmonella if you don't know it is okay antigenically complex and it is having a lot of antigens like the o antigen the h antigen and also we have the vi antigen we're going to describe this topics in detail okay in the, uh, upcoming slides i will explain these things as well so o antigen h antigen and the vi antigen now zero grouping ka matlab kya hota hai the genus salmonella is divided into different zero groups on the basis of the somatic o antigen guys okay the somatic antigen or the o antigen ke basis pe it is divided theek hai and it is having nearly 67 zero groups ke andar divide kiya gaya 67 zero groups and this table below is going to show the examples over here jaise ki we have the zero group 2 it was initially called as your zero group a and it involves a group specific a o antigen of type 2 similarly zero group 4 ke andar we have the type 4 wala uh, group specific o antigen and in zero group 9 which is also called as zero group d and it is okay involving the group specific o antigen type 9 ka hoga so these are some examples with respect to zero groups now this zero groups are further differentiated into zero types on the basis of their flagellar h antigen on the basis of the flagellar h antigen ke basis pe like nearly more than 2500 zero types have been classified guys theek hai 2500 zero types clear so that was the antigenic classification to remember third classification scheme that is called molecular classification and when i say molecular means we are going to talk about dna guys so basis okay on the basis of the dna hybridization study your genus salmonella is going to consist of two important species theek hai two species hoti hai and that is nothing but your salmonella enterica and salmonella bongori guys theek hai and the salmonella enterica this species is having for the six important sub subspecies and that is enterica salami arizona di arizona hortini and the indica these are the important six sub species under this category now there is one important point to be remembered over here and that is 
ऑल दी सालमोनेला के जितने पैथोजेनिक स्पीशीज होती है ओके ऑल दी पैथोजेनिक स्पीशीज ऑफ सालमोनेला लाइज अंडर द स्पीशीज एंटेरिका एंड सा स्पीशी एंटेरिका में लाई करते हैं एंड दिस ब्रिंग्स अस टू द नेक्स्ट टॉपिक एंड दैट इज योर नॉर्मन क्लेचर गाइस ठीक है नॉर्मन क्लेचर मींस हाउ व्हाट इज द नेमिंग सिस्टम हाउ डू वी नेम सालमोनेला राइट सो देयर आर फोर इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग्स टू रिमेंबर गाइस ठीक है फर्स्ट थिंग वी आर गोइंग टू राइट द नेम ऑफ द जीनस व्हिच इज सालमोनेला वी आर डिस्कसिंग द जीनस सालमोनेला which is the common species enterica is the common species theek okay? hai and which is the common subspecies it is again enterica only okay just in the previous slide i mentioned the same point and serotype over here we can write the serotype typhi over here see there are like this becomes a very lengthy name therefore right now we only use only write the genus and the serotype that is salmonella and the serotype typhi is what we are going to mention so this is how we do the nomenclature of your salmonella clear so this was all about the classification and nomenclature now let's have a look on the antigenic structure as i mentioned guys aapka salmonella is antigenically complex right so it is going to have important antigens okay three important antigens on their cell membrane okay on the cell wall on the cell wall they have antigens guys theek hai as the somatic antigen or the o antigen we have the flagellar antigen or the h antigen and lastly we have the surface envelope antigen or the vi antigen this vi antigen is found in only some species sirf kuch species mein dekhne milta hai okay let's understand the details or some characteristic features with all uh, of all these antigens separately okay so first thing first that is somatic antigen versus h antigen ek difference between ke form mein let's understand some important points somatic antigen where is the somatic antigen present it is a part of the cell wall ka lipopolysaccharide and now if you know the structure of the cell wall we know cell wall mein hum log ke paas lipopolysaccharide hota hai and that lipopolysaccharide is the one which is having the o antigen location clear hua and if i say flagellar h antigen it's so name se clear it is present in the flagella and flagella ke andar hota hai this h antigen is present in the flagella which is made up of a protein called as flagellin and what is the function of flagella very good it is for motility it confers motility to the bacteria it helps in the movement theek okay? hai next point second point is with respect to the vidal test What is Vidal test? Vidal test is a serological investigation, guys. It's a serological test that is useful for making the diagnosis of enteric fever, guys. Okay? In the lab diagnosis, in the up, uh, upcoming videos, I will be covering what is Vidal test in great detail. But for the timing, just remember when you are performing Vidal test, guys, we require certain antigens into it. Okay? So O antigen of only the S typhi, Salmonella typhi ka only O antigen is used, whereas the H antigen is used of Salmonella typhi, Salmonella para typhi A and B. All the organisms ka H antigen is used. ठीक है ओ एंटीजन इज काइंड ऑफ लेस इम्यूनोजेनिक वेर एज द एच एंटीजन इज मोर इम्यूनोजेनिक ठीक है now let's have a look on the antibodies okay so see o antigen is something that's a part of the organism and when salmonella enters into the body okay our body's immune system will generate antibodies against it yes or no so this o antibody this is going to appear early and it is also going to disappear early guys and this indicates what a recent infection right so jaise infection hoga the antibodies will generate this o antibody will generate early and will disappear early so the finding of an o antibody it's an indicator that there is a recent infection has taken place whereas on the other hand the h antibody is the one which will appear late disappear late and it is indication of convalescent stage of the disease guys theek okay? hai it is indicating the convalescent stage of the disease and what do we mean by the convalescent stage convalescent stage is like the end stage of the disease when the disease is almost about to end guys okay it's the stage is the recovery stage okay it is nothing but the recovery stage recovering from an illness or a medical treatment guys okay so that is the literal meaning of what is convalescent stage okay it's nothing but when the patient is recovering at that point the so late aa raha hai hai na jab disease ho chuki hai the patient is like on the recovery phase at that time is your antibody that is going to h antibody is going to appear and disappear so it is an indication ke infection ho chuka hai now the patient is into the recovery phase whereas o antibody is like the infection is ongoing and i tell early antibody it's an early appearance and early disappearance and it is an indication of recent infection the infection is all is ongoing guys right? okay so that is the difference now ab antigen hai antibody hai won't they react so let's have a look on agglutination that is antigen antibody reaction guys right? okay so now when i say o antigen guys this o antigen is the one that is going to react with the o antibody and it is going to form the compact granular chalky clumps okay again a very potential site to ask get your mcqs from this part that 
ओ एंटीजन ओ एंटीबॉडी का रिएक्शन करो विच टाइप ऑफ क्लम्स आर फॉर्म तो यू शुड रिमेम्बर इज अ कॉम्पैक्ट ग्रैनुलर चौकी क्लम्स आर फॉर्म एंड दिस एग्लूटिनेशन इज गोइंग टू इज अ स्लो प्रोसेस ओवर हियर एंड इज गोइंग टू टेक प्लेस एट एन ऑप्टिमम टेम्परेचर ऑफ फिफ्टी फाइव डिग्री सेल्सियस ठीक है एमसीक्यूज कैन बी आज फ्रॉम दिस पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट गाइज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट देन एच एंटीजन जो होता है इट इज गोइंग टू रिएक्ट विद द एच एंटीबॉडी फॉर्म्स अ लार्ज लूज फ्लफी क्लम्स तो एच एंटीजन एच एंटीबॉडी रिएक्शन Which type of clumps are formed? Large, loose, fluffy clumps are formed, guys. Take care. And next, yeah, agglutination is a rapid process, and it is going to take place at a temperature of thirty-seven degrees centigrade, right? So anything can be asked as an MCQ from this point. Last thing, guys, we know already from the antigenic classification or the Kaufman-White scheme. Somatic O antigen is useful in the zero grouping, and whereas the H antigen is useful in zero. Typing guys, okay. We know this basic points. I hope you know this thing, right? That the zero groups are further differentiated into zero types on the basis of the H antigen. I hope easily we can remember this important points with respect to the O antigen and the H antigen. Next thing we have the VI antigen. This is the last topic that is VI antigen, guys. Okay, VI antigen is also called as is nothing but a surface polysaccharide envelope or a capsular antigen. ठीक है कैप्सुलर एंटीजन होता है कि कैप्सूल है मैं बोल रहा हूं इट्स अ कैप्सुलर एंटीजन इफ यू नो इट इज कैप्सूल होता है कैप्सूल के अंडर वी हैव द सेल वॉल यस और नो कैप्सूल के नीचे वी हैव द सेल वॉल एंड ओ एंटीजन कहां होता है ओ एंटीजन इज प्रेजेंट ऑन द सेल वॉल तो कैन आई से दिस कैप्सुलर एंटीजन ऑफ द वी आई एंटीजन इज द वन दैट इज गोइंग टू कवर द ओ एंटीजन डस दैट मेक सेंस नेक्स्ट थिंग इट इज एक्सप्रेस इन ओनली फ्यू सीरो टाइप्स ठीक है जैसे कि एस टाइफी एंड एस पैरा टाइफी सी इन द फर्स्ट लाइट ऑफ एंटीजेनिक स्ट्रक्चर आई ओनली लेट यू ऑल नो दैट वी आर एंटीजन कुछ ही स्पीशीज में देखने को मिलता है एंड विद स्पीशीज वेरी स्पेसिफिकली रिमेम्बर इज अ एस टाइफी एंड द एस पैरा टाइफी सी कैटेगरी के अंदर प्रेजेंट होता है ये ठीक है ना वी आर एंटीजन जो होता है ना गाइज दिस वी आर एंटीजन इज नॉट यूज इन द विडाल टेस्ट इट इज नॉट यूजफुल इन द डायग्नोसिस में भी यूजफुल नहीं होता है why because it is poorly immunogenic and the second reason is the antibody titer is very low what do i mean by antibody titers as i abhi dekho matlab dekho ye aapka salmonella hai salmonella ke capsule ke upar vi antigen present hai body ke andar enter kiya salmonella salmonella entering inside your body the body's immune system will produce antibodies against to it yes or no बट वी आर एंटीजन इज वेरी कॉमनली मतलब प्रेजेंट नहीं होता कुछ स्पीशीज में ही होता है एंड अगर होगा भी तो उसके अगेंस्ट जो एंटीबॉडीज जनरेट भी होगी उनका अमाउंट वुड बी वेरी लो तो द एंटीबॉडी टाइटर इज ऑल्सो वेरी लो एंड इट इज पुअरली इम्यूनोजेनिक दे फॉर विडाल टेस्ट में वी डू नॉट यूज इट एंड द डायग्नोसिस में तो हेल्पफुल नहीं है फिर वो राइट नाउ नेक्स्ट थिंग नेक्स्ट गाइज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट दैट इज देखो वी आर एंटीजन आई एम सेंग दैट इट इज नॉट अ कॉमन टाइप ऑफ एंटीजन गाइज बट स्टिल एस टाइफी या एस पैरा टाइफी सी पे प्रेजेंट होता है तो उसके अगेंस्ट एंटीबॉडीज मिलेगी तो द प्रेजेंस ऑफ अ लो एंटीबॉडी टाइटर इज काइंड ऑफ अ गुड कंडीशन गाइज ठीक है अगर देर इज कंप्लीट एब्सेंस ऑफ द वी आर एंटीबॉडी वेरी मतलब लाइक देर इज एब्सेंस ऑफ द एंटीबॉडी टाइटर वॉट आई कैन वॉट इज इज इंडिकेटर दैट देर इज पुअर प्रोग्नोसिस इज एन इंडिकेटर ऑफ पुअर प्रोग्नोसिस गाइज टू रिमेम्बर दिस इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट नेक्स्ट थिंग जो हम लोग का वी आई एंटीबॉडी होता है ना गाइज ठीक है ये जल्दी डिसअपियर हो जाता है नॉर्मली दिस विल डिसअपियर अर्ली इन द कॉन्वलेसेंस राइट द मोमेंट द पेशेंट स्टार्ट रिकवरिंग गाइज द वी आई एंटीबॉडीज विल ऑल्सो डिसअपियर गाइज बट इफ दिस वी आई एंटीबॉडीज परसिस्टिंग वॉट इज इट इंडिकेटिंग इट इज इंडिकेटिंग द ऑफ द कैरियर स्टेट कैरियर स्टेट को इंडिकेट कर रहा है ये एंड लास्टली वी आई एंटीजन को हम लोग वैक्सीन प्रोडक्शन के अंदर यूज कर सकते हैं ओके फॉर वैक्सीनेशन वी आई एंटीजन कैन बी यूज क्लियर so this marks the end of the two important topics the three important classification scheme what is the nomenclature how do you nomenclate this uh, organism and lastly antigenic structure can the teen antigen ki characteristic features humne study kare right and the next uh, subsequent uh, topics will be covered in the upcoming videos guys take care so that was it for this session thank you so much for watching if you found this content useful then you know do like share and subscribe to my channel which is ams mbbs lectures guys and please comment down if you have any queries or questions i am there to answer it guys okay see you on the next one bye bye